he granted your request. You can attend the workshop and the cost for your participation will be covered 50-50, said Mark to Julia. Before I joined the team, she was the only freelance software engineer there. Shortly after my arrival, the company announced the Kubernetes workshop for its intern employees. Julia, despite being a freelancer, was eager to learn about this emergent technology and persuaded our boss to let her participate, covering half the cost herself. Kubernetes? I thought to myself, what a strange name. Should I too ask the boss to allow me to join and cover 50% of the cost? It was 2017, and I was a freelance software engineer working at a big media company in Hamburg. Every day, I left the office at 3 p.m. to be with my one-year-old baby waiting for me at the home. The workshop, however, was scheduled until 5 p.m. In the end, I hesitated, choosing my baby over the unfamiliar term Kubernetes, which didn't spark my curiosity, and I had no clue about its future role in the tech market. Back then, Kubernetes was just three years old. On June 6, 2024, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, hosted the Kubernetes birthday bash, marking the 10-year milestone of this tool. Now, Kubernetes is no longer a strange name in the software industry. Everyone has heard of it, even those who haven't yet dived into its complexities. It became the de facto standard for container orchestration. But is Kubernetes the only solution? And what does the future of container management hold? From one of many to the one. Kubernetes' journey began with Google's internal project Borg, which aimed to revolutionize cloud application development and management. On June 6, 2014, Joe Beda made the first commit to GitHub, laying the foundation for what would become an open source giant. Later, Eric Brauer announced Kubernetes at the first DockerCon conference. It was just one of many tools competing for container orchestration dominance. Apache Mesos, Docker Swarm, and AWS ECS management tools are all used for container management. So what differentiates Kubernetes from them? When Kubernetes first came onto the scene, it was fantastic for managing stateless application containers, but it had some significant gaps. It couldn't handle stateful workloads well, and it lacked support for other crucial infrastructure needs. Everything changed with the introduction of stateful sets and Kubernetes operators. These features brought reliable, persistent storage and made it easier to manage complex applications. Suddenly, Kubernetes wasn't just good for narrow range of applications, it became a comprehensive solution for many more scenarios. This pivotal evolution drove a surge in its adoption. The power of community. One of the smartest moves by Google was making Kubernetes open source and donating it to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF. This decision meant that instead of being controlled by one company, Kubernetes would be supported by a diverse and passionate community. This community aspect was crucial. It led to widespread collaboration and continuous contributions, which made Kubernetes stronger and more reliable over time. The community didn't stop at just basic improvements. They pushed hard for better support for stateful workloads and established formal collaboration platforms like the Data on Kubernetes community. This collective effort transformed Kubernetes from a tool for stateless container management into a versatile cloud-native platform preferred by developers and organizations alike. The birth of a massive ecosystem since Kubernetes joined the CNCF, the ecosystem around it has exploded. The CNCF now has over 700 members and almost 250,000 contributors. It manages 187 projects and Kubernetes alone has seen contributions from more than 80,000 people across over 8,000 companies. This vast network of contributors has created a rich ecosystem that supports and enhances Kubernetes in countless ways. Adapting to new challenges As Kubernetes grew, it had to adapt to new challenges. It expanded beyond simple container orchestration to include features like role-based access control, RBAC, network policies, custom resource definitions, CRD, and an updated batch and job API for EI ML workloads. But with growth came complexity. 
the community frequently debates which features should be core and what should be left as additional interfaces, trying to keep Kubernetes powerful yet manageable. Navigating the growing pains Over its 10 years of development, Kubernetes has certainly faced its share of challenges. Users have dealt with breaking changes, causing some to stick with older versions to avoid disruptions. However, these growing pains are typical for any evolving ecosystem. They reflect the natural progression and continuous improvement efforts that keep Kubernetes at the forefront of cloud-native computing. Looking ahead As Kubernetes celebrates its 10th anniversary, its profound impact on cloud-native computing is undeniable. The future holds more of innovation, but it will also require careful balance, maintaining the core strengths of Kubernetes while embracing new advancements will be crucial. So what do you think about Kubernetes and the future of container orchestration? Share your experiences and join the discussion in the comment section. I'm all ears. Excited about diving deeper into the world of software architecture? This video is just the beginning. Check out my Udemy video course on software architecture, where I explore these concepts further and dive into real-world challenges. The link to the course is in the video description below. And here is a bonus. Subscribe to my newsletter and you will get free access to all my courses. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates and tech insights. See you next time.